<laughs> no one likes traffic, right? <laughs> no one in the world. One word, Julian, to one describe word. LA traffic. Crazy. Painful. My afternoons. What's up, Los Angeles? <laughs> Woo! Woo! The sun is out, our oh. sunglasses are on. This feels right. It, this does feel right. <laughs> it feels right because this is just part one <laughs> of our two-part El Trafico LA extravaganza on the call-up. Welcome in, Jillian Sackovitz alongside Susanna Collins. This is incredible. I mean, I just, I really do feel like this is... LA looks good on you. It looks great on you, sister. <laughs> Let me so you're just gonna say, say it looks great on me. It looks great on you. <laughs> uh, this is so exciting. We are here ahead of the first edition of El Trafico of the 2022 season that's gonna be taking place right here at Dignity Health Sports Park. I am so pumped because these games are always crazy. Always. You've been at some inc I know, incredible, I incredible games. And Lucky this weekend is just likely to be another one. Mm -hmm. And all signs right now, Susanna Collins, are pointing to the fact that it's likely going to be the first time we ever see Carlos Vela taking on Chicharito oh, in Major M League Soccer. G. And Chicha told us, or Javi, as we're calling him, Javi. that uh, <laughs> they've been talking. They've been talking this week. So uh, let's take a listen. We are thrilled, thrilled to be joined by the guy who needs no introduction, None. striker for the LA Galaxy, <laughs> Javier Hernandez, Chicharito, Chicha. We are so happy. This has been a long time in the making for us. We're so happy to have oh, you. Thank you guys. I'm so happy to be here too. We mention all your names and it's always awkward when I interviewed you in Gate One, I'm like, do I call him Chicharito? Do I call him Javier? What's your preferred name? <laughs> Any. <laughs> Any? Yeah, I'm what yourself. What do your friends call yeah. you? What do your friends call you? We want to be uh, friends. Nowadays, my friend, uh, for example, the friends that, I, that I'm seeing more and they come over here in LA, they call me Javi. Javi, okay. Yeah, like my family, but my, the friends that I always grew up with them and they in, in, in Mexico and I see them when I go there or they, sometimes they come, they call me Chicha. Mm. What does oh, your they, mom call you? <laughs> my mom is Javi and when she's angry, it's Javier. <laughs> Right. Yeah, when I, when, when I hear my full name, it's like, I'm, You're in I'm trouble. trouble yeah. And that went through my head. He scores the game winner. I'm like, he's not in trouble, so he's not Javier. He's not Javier. I know. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I think we go with Javi. Can we okay. call you Javi? Yeah, of Javi. We're friends, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so we've got El Trafico coming up this yeah. weekend. And this is so exciting because this is the first one where you are going to face off against Carlos Vela. I feel like this is the, the matchup that we've all <laughs> been waiting for for yeah. so long. Um, how excited are you? I'm very excited. Care? Actually, we, we have a very good conversation on the phone last week about our lives to catch up a little bit. And it was amazing. I mean, I, I grew up with him regardless of the, of the rivalry and the traffic and what it means for him and for myself, obviously, to, to face for the first time uh, each other in this league since I came because of COVID and all my injuries, and then he was injured as well. So finally, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a a very a very uh, special moment even for me because I love him so much. We grew up when when when, when we were playing in, in Chivas, you know, mm -hmm. when we were young. Then he went to the to the under 17, and then he went to Europe and all his career, and then mine too. So we actually been just playing. Uh, together most of the time. Then we play once in the Champions League when I was in United and he was in Real Sociedad. We, we play each other over there too. So it's always special when you play uh, against people that, that you admire, when you love and you grew up with, with him, obviously. But then speaking about the traffic, obviously we're going to be in our stadium. We're going to face them and, and there's no other result for us that, that the win and the three points. So do you and Carlos like talk throughout the year? Do you hang out living in the same city? Not, not that much because we are being very careful because of our kids and the situation with COVID and of stuff course. right now that is getting a little bit more open yeah. and stuff. He's been very precautious in that, in that sense, me too, but uh, we, we couldn't hang out that much, but we speak, we speak often, obviously. We text, we, we communicate each other. Like I told you last week, we, we have a pretty long and very, a very like, like, like deep uh, conversation about his life and about my life too. If you called him right now, mm. would he pick up? Is he good at like <laughs> answering text messages let's and see, calling? Yeah, let's <laughs> test. I, 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 think, I think he cool. He, or, or, or the good thing about him is if he doesn't answer, he texts you like if he's busy, I'll, I'll call you back or I something appreciate like that. that. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I know, I know. Yeah. If tomorrow... Hey, he's, he, that's the thing. He's very special. He's mm. very peculiar if you can see. Mm. He's very authentic. That's something that 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 I admire in, in particular. But he's such a nice guy. When yeah. He opens the door of, of his feelings and and he welcomes you in that way. He's. I would love that people can see more of him. He decides to uh, to as well. Don't show that much of his side. He likes to to be more private in that sense. And I'm completely the opposite. I'm an, I'm more of an extrovert in the cameras and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And he's like more of an introvert. But he's such a kind a kind guy. Very generous and as well very funny. 
So, Javi, tomorrow, if around this time your phone rings and it's Carlos Vela, yeah. you need to pick up because it's probably going to be us. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll send you a text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll call you in one month, no? Well, friends. <laughs> um, what do you think of the name El Trafico? Because it's just such a polarizing topic. So we need to know, what does Chicharito call it? First of all, it's terrible because <laughs> no one likes traffic, right? <laughs> no one in the world. So then what you're going to face, for example, imagine <laughs> telling all the, all the people who live here in L.A. that this weekend is a trafico and then you need to catch traffic to get to the trafico, you know? So it's like, it's a little bit, I don't love it. I don't love it, actually. Uh -huh. But the meaning, the meaning mm. uh, uh, from, from, from that game is... It's very special, and I think that's that's comparing to LA Galaxy. They're like a new organization, trying to find the, the first like championship. They've been having good runs in some seasons, but then we are LA Galaxy. You know, we are the most successful club over here, and 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 the beauty of of this city that finally can have that rivalry. You know, between two top teams is amazing. This rivalry in particular, I feel like I have been in, I've been in a bunch of these games, and there's always crazy moments yeah. that happen. They're always, always nuts. What can we expect? Like, what do you, I mean, if you could draw it up, I know you've been on fire recently, hey. Javi. You've been scoring lots of goals. Are we going to see a Javi hat trick? Hopefully, like hopefully, what, obviously. What I mean, I always, I, I, I'm that kind of guy that always aims high. You know, we want yeah. the three points, yeah. one clean sheet. And if I can score as many goals as I can, welcome, you know, but... But something that I can guarantee, and, and, and I think it's, it's from, from our side, a part of, of, of the situations that I always say that our mindset and, and the way that we want to, to face every game, giving everything. Since I came here and as well in the past when I was watching these games, there are always goals, yeah. for sure. Always goes. There's never been a, a draw, no. zero, zero, nil, nil. I hope it, I hope I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm gonna be the, the guy who's gonna bring the, the first one nil, nil here. But no, I think we always play very offensive. Both organizations. We always want to to make people to feel a, a attract to the to the style of play. You know, they're very open. They're very attract as well with the new manager as well. And then when when Greg came here. We know his past in Toronto, the way that he wants to, to always try to get the ball, to manage it, to be open, to be offensive, to try to yeah, to score as many goals as we can. So obviously it's going to be a very, very entertaining game. And like I said it, and what is in my mind, obviously, is the three points because I don't want to get... I don't, I don't want... We don't want to cheat. I mean, I'm going to be I happy will... watching, watching Carlos and say goodbye and stuff, but... Well, he's a cheeky. He's a cheeky guy, so I don't <laughs> want him to make to make fun of me after the game. Obviously. Oh my gosh! So you, that's the style on the field. We have to talk about your style in in general, which no, right now it's terrible. Right now it's no, terrible, but guys. I came with a, with a, with a black shirt and a little bit better, but then they told me that I went. I it's a look. Use, it's a look. That LA Galaxy shirt. Javi. And I thought they were going to give me another one, but they gave me, well, not the best. I do like the mint. Yeah. I like the mint. The mint too, is nice. Blue shirts, you know. Okay. I'm All not right. happy, and Hannah, my stylist, is gonna is gonna hate me because I told her she was like, "Do I need to dress you?" And he's like, "No." They told me it's just a close like shot is gonna be just. The oh. Shirt. She was like, "We've been preparing months for that." I know. Literally, we were like, "We need to years. really bring our game yes. a game." Since I this. came to this league, Chicha Chicha's got like top notch style. So top notch we... style. I I still love the Miami Vice look in in week one. Oh. So I have to ask Iconic. you, what's your that favorite? What's your favorite look that you've had since you've been in MLS? Like, do you have one that? I think that one. Yeah, okay, good. That is one of the best. We have we haven't gotten it uh, approved yet by the commissioner Don Garber, <laughs> but in addition to a golden boot, which you understand, I want to have a golden hanger, which I also would award to you. One hundred percent. We we are the Thank unofficial you fashion police Thank you guys. of MLS, just so you know. Okay, amazing. Um, so Appreciate is it. there? I did I did an interview with Bastian Schweinsteiger mm. like five years ago, mm. and I remember he told me he would never wear denim. Like he hates jeans. Is there anything that you're like? No, I just will not wear this. Are Do you kind of willing to try no, and I'm, and I'm gonna confess you something as well I in after two years I, I, I was in a very rough uh, situation in my life speaking about that I speak a lot about mental health and, and depression and all that kind of stuff and and you know people sometimes think that clothing clothes and stuff and the the, the the superficiality that is in there but for me it's very it's very spiritual in a way that I'm pushing myself in that sense you know that for example those with Hannah, when I spoke with her, that she's she's an amazing woman. She's she's so like 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 relentless and very very hardworking, and she wants to grow and, and as well. So when we were talking together, I just said like, of course I want to look good and I want to feel good before games and and, and in life in general and events, but I'm doing it more of pushing myself as mm -hmm. well to don't feel comfortable. Of course, normally look 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 my normal outfits. Then when Hannah brings some some of the outfits, like hey. She always does that. She's like, I have the most risky one, I have the safe one, and I have the one that is like, 
it's not my favorite, but you're gonna go look good in any. So I most of the time tries to go to that to that one, you know, because a part of looking good and feeling good is like something that I don't do normally. So why not just push yourself in any sense as well? <laughs> I mean, that's why I want to bring it up because that's that's the the way out outside my 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 depression when I get out of that. That was that's my mantra in a way, like push yourself every single day in every in every part in every moment that you can you know I'm a father a partner friendships a looks trainings a being here even even in the press I didn't spoke that much like be more vulnerable be my myself so in every aspect in my life in every situation most of the times I'm human I'm not perfect we don't make mistakes we don't have decisions that probably one not feel very proud of because that's part of life but I just want to be me yeah. so and to be me and to know who Javi is through time, he needs to put himself in very complicated or uncomfortable situations to know if I like it or not. So, so far in the outfits and it kind of the work that I have been with, with uh, Hannah, I feel, I've been feeling pretty, pretty good because yeah, I'm pushing my ego and I'm pushing that uh, uh, voice that we all have in our head that says like, hey, be safe, no, they, they're going to make fun of you. Oh, oh, you're not looking that good, like all that stuff. So I just say like, I couldn't say the word because it's an F word, like <laughs> F it. F it. Let's do it. I love yeah. that. That's so inspirational. Really thank you. Is. Thank you for sharing that yeah. with yeah, us. And cool. you should feel so good about that Miami Vice outfit. So I'll give I love you, it. I I'll give you a full disclosure. Her and I were trying to recreate that we look were. just to come here, but it was it was too hard to <laughs> track and then we, down. I know. And then we were like, "Is he? What if we fail miserably? Yeah. Like, it's just, and it's yours was, yours, the OG is always yeah. the best, you know. <laughs> so we were like, "No, we're just gonna let him Javi, own that one." Yeah, it's all you, Javi. Before we let you go, Pete, there's always El Trafico. You know, you mentioned your mental health, all that. What's the one question or the one thing that you feel like the media doesn't ask you enough about? Or do they ask you way too many <laughs> questions? No, I will love that the narrative, like. And I know it's coming along in a way. I will. I always said it, and I said it in one interview. I don't remember when with Mexico. In a way, like, like we should we should be in the same boat because one thing is the business, and one thing, of course, is selling, and one thing is, of course, traffic. Who wants you to win? The, LFC, <laughs> the LA Galaxy fans they want LA Galaxy, obviously, and the LFC they want them to win, and the competition and stuff. But as much as the press can treat us as humans. We are gonna start mm -hmm. as well, be, no, no, not saying like behaving a human, but showing you that we are humans as well. Because yeah. they, 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 I think press in general of fame and success put you in a pedestal kind of stuff of like, you need to be perfect for society in a way. And, 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 and I just want to be me, responsible with good intentions, but, I, but it's me, human. So there's no perfection in the end. So, about a question, it doesn't matter, the question is the subjects in yeah. the end. So I think if the narrative changes, that of course the outcome, it's important, but we just utilize the outcome to push ourselves and enjoy the process. That's the main thing. If you don't enjoy a process and you and you win a championship, there's people that they didn't feel like that. And then there's people that probably finished second place and it's terrible to say this, but the way that they push, the way to get there, the joy that they have, sometimes it's, it's, it's more like fulfillment in that way. So obviously I want to win and you know me and I, and I'm, and I'm the first one, and, and Vicky and them, they know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in pain in the <laughs> even sometimes because I'm very loud. Look, I like to speak but as well when I'm angry, frustrated. Why well, put my ego outside to, to bring the best out of that, of this soccer uh, player that I have inside me? I just want to win. Like, I hate to lose. Mm -hmm. But then that's the switch, of course, like, I'm a, like yeah, it's a human in a competition. We're not robots. In ah, way, well, so. thank you for letting us into the human yes, side. We are very Javi. appreciative of you. One word to describe LA traffic real quick. One word. One word. Win. Just win. I <laughs> What's the longest it's ever taken you to get to the stadium in LA? Uh, <laughs> you're gonna say that I'm a freaky because I remember it pretty well. 32 minutes. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I know, but. El Trafico, nothing. Oh boy, we've got the Cali kid with us right back for the LA Galaxy, Julian Araujo. It's so good to see you. Thank you for uh, hanging out with the with the call up today. We've got um, a big match coming up. Yeah, for sure. El thank Trafico. You thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, so it's going to be a good game. Uh -huh. for sure. I'm super excited. Uh, I know everybody else is as well, and uh, yeah, we're we're all we're all prepared. So, you're a California guy. Like, what is this? What does this rivalry mean, and how have you seen it kind of develop over the last few years? 
I mean, I feel it, it means, you know, this is what I grew up wanting to, these are the games that I grew up wanting to play in. Um, yeah, LAFC is a good team. We, we know what this match is going to be like. We know, uh, we know we're going to have to play with, with everything, you know. It's not just the game anymore. It's uh, we're fighting for, for, for the city. And, you know, we want to take over. So this is, we've been here and uh, we know that what we have to do and we're, we're excited. What are your thoughts, Julie, on, on the name, El Trap? <laughs> Are we here for that? <laughs> it's all right. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's You're not right. totally That's not enthusiastic. Yeah, no. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Chicha said he hates that song. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's whatever. Do you have, like, a better alternative, or we're okay with that? No, I don't. Yeah, okay. I don't. I, I haven't, I haven't thought you know, of it. No, I had heard like Copa del Sol. There was like a whole, a whole Sol. host of them. There, people were, people were very upset with El Trafico. People that lived in LA. Yeah. Because I think it's like, traffic. like they don't want to be known for the traffic. But you Too know, bad you are we exactly. Are known for traffic, Listen, though. you, you're, you're from here. I mean, like it is legitimately bad. What's the, what's the longest it's taken you to get in? How long have you sat in traffic to get I've here? I've never, or probably like from my house to, to training, maybe. 30, 45 minutes, but there was one time where I had to get like an MRI done in Santa Monica, and wow, oh, yeah. fucking like three hours from <gasps> Santa Monica to, to my house. Yeah. Wow. Three, three and a half That's hours. Offensive. Yeah. <laughs> I was mad. I was falling asleep. I was going to get out of my car and call an Uber. <laughs> what do you what do you listen to in the car when you're sitting in traffic? Are you like a podcast I'm guy? I'm annoyed at sometimes. Like, I just turn off all the music really? at one point if there's a lot of traffic i can't listen to anything so you sit in total yeah i'll probably call silence. my mom <laughs> call my mom call my niece she talks you down yeah <laughs> uh, it, it goes by faster <laughs> you mentioned your your parents um mexican parents you know you've i know it's the question you keep on getting but it's the thing that you know is so prevalent mm -hmm. in mls is having Mexican Americans and you did a really great interview with the Cooligans where you just simply mentioned that you felt really welcomed with the yeah. Mexican yeah. national team you know you had been with the US tried with them and Mexico what who welcomed you what what was it that made it so welcoming I think I just I just felt I felt a part of them as soon as I got there uh, they they welcomed me very you know they with open arms and I you know at the at the dinner table, at training, they were all just very, they never left me out of anything. They always made me feel involved in everything. Uh, I'm very happy with my decision. You know, I, still that I'm not getting, that I haven't got any playing time. I'm still very happy with my, my decision. I'm still very comfortable with my decision. And, you know, I, I know my time will come and I'm going to be patient and I'm going to wait for that. Love it. Um, it. What's so cool about El Trafico in particular is that it kind of puts onto center stage that Mexican and American soccer supporter yeah. culture yes. what is that what does that look like from your lens it's the best i think i think it's you know just to see everybody come out here and then uh you know i i we we all want to keep them entertained we know it's going to be it's going to be a game where, where everybody's going to be involved you know where our our stadium you're luckily we're playing at home and you know our fans are our energy there's they're our motor and they're, they're what's going to keep us going throughout the whole 90 minutes we were having the discussion last night are you more Bank of California, <laughs> are you more LA Galaxy? And I was saying, the thing I love about driving up here is everyone cooking and tailgating. Yeah. You know, I'm from the Northeast yeah. and there's not a uh, food hall at the stadium. There's tailgating and you're making your own food. And that's yeah. what I love coming up to these games. So I'm excited for that yeah, for, for sure. um, El Trafico. We had your teammate Chicharito on earlier. It's gonna be the first time, finally, after years of waiting, that Chicharito goes up against Carlos Vela. All arrows are pointing to that. It's it's happening. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> How excited are you to kind of see that and, and be on the field for that? I'm excited for him, man. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. You know, he he's had a very he had a very hard first year, and he's he's been very different this year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's he's done a lot of things to keep himself focused, and you know, he's a, he's a true pro, and he shows it on the field every weekend. And I'm excited for the fans to not only see him, but all, the whole team. You know, we're we're gonna come out and give him a game. What do you call him? He told he told us we could call him Javi. That's a really good question. Javi? Yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody calls him Javi. <gasps> yeah. Just us. Just us. Yeah, just we're, you guys. No, I call what do you call him? Chicha. Um, yeah, Chicha. Chicha? Chicha. Okay. All right. Chicha, All right. Yeah. Uh, He's not going to watch this, so I have to ask. Is, yeah. he the most, is he the most, is he the best dressed guy on the team? Or is there best like other, guy. other guys that kind of deserve the accolades? I hope he watches it. <laughs> um, best dressed guy. Or just some. He's... He's different. Uh huh. He's different. Right. Um, best dressed in a different way. Uh, but there's there's some guys that got some. Swag. Who brings it? Yeah, yeah. Who brings it? When I was you standing in that tunnel watching the guys walk by, I was oh I know out of the I know it's, it's like a catwalk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who brings <laughs> like it? That's t that's a good question. 
Julian Araujo. Uh, sometimes I bring it. Uh, I see the bling. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. Did not I get try, past I us, try. Julian. No. No, I love I love fashion, so I try. I try. <sighs> Do you have a stylist yet? I don't. That's next, I right? Next pictures. steps. Yeah, that's the next step. <laughs> Yeah, those, those are the next steps. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, you also, you were the recipient of the Mayor's Community Athlete of the Year Award at the LA Sports Award, yeah. which is so cool. Can you tell us about some of the the work that you do in the community and why that matters to you? Yeah, so obviously having a, having a family that that has a background of working in the uh, agriculture, uh, you know, working in the farm. I have my, my grandparents, all of my aunts, uncles uh, that all came to the United States at a very young age that went straight to working in the fields. Uh, you know, that was their first job when they first came out here to the to the States. And, you know, for me, it was something that I wanted to to help out and to use my voice in. And I'm and I'm so honored and blessed to have to have gotten that uh, award. Uh, it means the world to me and you know I just want to continue to use my voice and, and help them out. When you support them and it's an incredible award to win it's all professional athletes in the Los Angeles area you made the front page of the LA Times what are some of the things that you do or the ways that you support them and, and what should people know? Yeah so I'm um so what I try to do, you know, obviously they they have a they have long days at work, and I try to I I'm some I've partnered up with the uh, the UFW uh, United Farm Workers uh, Organization. Uh, I want to continue to do that. I haven't had a lot of time to you know set up like events and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but you know I've given a lot of um, I've donated a lot of money to to the families uh, to the organization. Um, I've tried to just, uh, you know, just let them know that they're appreciated, that their hard work doesn't go unnoticed and what they're what they're doing for us. And we, we eat the vegetables and that they grow and we're, I'm thankful for them. That's amazing. Really That's is. really cool. We love to see the way that players give back. And you are a glowing example of that, Julian. Thank you. Um, you were an MLS All-Star yeah. last year. Pretty cool. Um, cool. What are your what are your goals? What are your goals for 2022? and beyond what does that look like my team goal is just to win the mls cup mm -hmm. uh, i want to i want to be a champion here uh you know i don't know how much more time i have here with the galaxy uh but i'm very i'm very focused on winning a, cha a championship here with them uh i want to i want to help the team improve every game i want to win a lot of games um for me personally i just want to stay consistent i want to get get minutes as much as i can and uh just help my team as much as i can Incredible. Well, Julian, this was very fun. We always love chatting with you. And uh, come back soon. Before we let you go, yeah. what? One word. One word, Julian, to One describe word. L.A. traffic. L.A. traffic? Yeah, L.A. traffic. One word. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Crazy. <laughs> we are so excited to bring in our next guest, Crazy to think, a decade it's been for you in Major League <laughs> Soccer, now the goalkeeper at LAFC, Max Cripo. And I want to tell everybody, if you're thinking it's Maxime, he told us to call him Max. Max. So that's what we're going with. Yeah, easier this way. How are yes. you guys? Good? Very good. Yeah. So happy to be in L.A. Oh, it's, this is... This is all right. Yeah, yeah. It Not is. bad. Uh, it's pretty warm, too. It's pretty hot this uh -huh. week as well, so it's going to be nice uh, leading up to the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, Max, obviously a Canadian international, you know, playing, played with the national team, grew up in Montreal. You came here from Vancouver. Uh, welcome to the United States and life here in the U.S., but then adding L.A. to it. How are you settling in? How's life? Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, it's a city that uh, has a lot to offer, obviously. Uh, it's beautiful and then uh, we're, we're selling really well, actually. Uh, we have, uh, we're in a townhouse here, uh, maybe 10 minutes up the downtown, so everything is really well. Thank you. What's been the, the biggest adjustment for you and the family coming from Vancouver to Los Angeles? Just paperwork, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> paperwork, that was the main thing. That was the main thing, just paperwork, uh, but, but you know, the life in general. You know, we were in, uh, in Salt Lake for four months mm -hmm. when I was with Vancouver, and so... Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, we forgot about this. We thing forgot, for yeah. Months. I've tried exactly. to forget COVID. I, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it happened. Oh. <laughs> yep, but, sure did. Um, exactly, so uh, everything was, it was uh, it's super good here, and, and yeah. uh, you know, we've still done well, everything is fine, and so uh, we're really happy to be here. What's the biggest difference about day-to-day -day life uh, with, uh, alongside all these Americans now? Oh, not much. Really? Not much. You know, locker room, uh, we got uh, people from pretty much all around the globe, you know, and yes. so uh, the teammates, uh, 
uh, well, guys that I've been playing against now are our teammates and uh, the the guys have been so welcoming. Honestly, everybody uh, open welcomed me with open arms, so that was amazing, and uh, I felt like uh, like home since day one, basically. It's incredible. It is. It's really nice, and uh, you know the the goalkeeper position. You know, it was an area of, I think it was an area of need for, for LAFC. And so you've kind of come in here and sort of, you know, solidified uh, that back line. You know, there's a whole a huge amount of confidence around the club when you are in the net. What does that mean to you to kind of have that immediate impact for this team? Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, it's my goal, you know. My goal is to uh, have that that uh, confident feeling from the back and obviously that transmit to the guys in front of me. But uh to be a guy that uh, when, when uh, John made the move and uh, got the trade in, uh, you know, I was super happy. But I knew that there was a position, the position that basically they changed a little bit pretty much every year. And so to have stability at the, this at this point is is really important, uh, especially from the back because we see everything and and we're the last man standing before that ball crossed the line. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's it's been good so far. Uh, but there's a lot of growth uh, with my teammates to, to go over the, the year. Even though we, we have a good start, we need to keep that uh, going for sure. Max, it's a big week. You got what will be your first El Trafico coming up. What have the guys told you? Uh, the, the, the city overall, everybody that I met so far said, hey, uh, this one is mean more than, than any, anything else. And uh, from the fans, from people within the club, obviously, but uh, a lot of, of fans and, and people that uh, like neighbors and such say, hey, <laughs> this weekend is the one. So uh, you can sense the hype and uh, people are really proud about this, uh, this game. And so uh, we're going to really, uh, really put the shift in to, to get the three points in, uh, in Carlson. The 32-52 are some of the most passionate, loud supporters yeah. in Major League Soccer. What is it like standing in front of them during the game? Yeah, it's fantastic to be. I was two times uh, on the other side of it. <laughs> now I'm on the good side of it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, they're fantastic. They're fantastic. Uh, they are so loud from one to minute 90, 90 plus. And so uh, when we couldn't see that the bank, I think twice this year, uh, we didn't even realize we conceded because they just uh, picked up the pace <laughs> and they're like, OK, let's go again. And, but that's what we need from them. They're really pushing us and they have high standards for us. And so um, that's fantastic. Uh, they've been really loud. And honestly, even on the road, we were home. We met Steve Chirundolo as head coach of LAFC for the first time today. We loved our conversation with him. For you, what's made him unique as a uh, head coach? Uh, the communication has been fantastic. Uh, you know, he, he retired not so long ago. He had obviously was uh, with, with Vegas last year and then uh, this year uh, with LAFC. But the, the way he talks and his message, message go through the team in the locker room, uh, he played the game not so long ago and he can pinpoint the little details that we need to apply. And, uh, you know, there's one, one thing to say, it's a cat is a cat. And so there's no, there's no uh, going around a subject, it's straight to the point, so it's fantastic. Is that your term or his term? I think it's a, a French expression that I tried to... We are huge cat fans. Yeah. I'm using <laughs> that all the chat. time. Or chat c'est un chat. Chat c'est un chat. This is a French... Yeah, the French Canadian uh, expression that I tried to translate word by I word. I am but so yes. here for that. No, I know that. No was BS, amazing. basically. No a BS. A cat is a yeah. cat. That was amazing. No, a cat is no, a cat. Gonna, is so much. <gasps> we're gonna use that. Yeah, we're gonna use that. Um, well, Max, Too we much. Uh, c a huge congratulations. Yeah. Are in order. I mean, finger what snaps for Team Canada. What? What a time to be involved <laughs> in Canadian soccer. I mean, it's just, it's so special what happened. I, you know, I, th I love the fact, uh, I know that the Canadian national team wanted to go undefeated throughout qualifying, but I think to, to qualify at home in Toronto had to be pretty special. Can you kind of just walk us through like the emotions of, of making the World Cup for the first time in 30 odd years? Yeah, first time 36. 36 uh, years. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's been amazing. Uh, and it was amazing. The moment in Toronto, Obviously, uh, we wanted to qualify ASAP, and so we wanted to do it in Costa Rica. Didn't pull it off, but um, I mean, everything happens for a reason, and to do it at home uh, with family, friends, home soil, it was phenomenal. I think uh, the guys that have been in through the program for the last four years, like, plant the seeds of that moment happening. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's been fantastic from, from that team. Uh, we have a group of guys that are really tight, and then uh, obviously we're not, now it's the next book, and the next page of the next page of the book that we got to write you know there's one chapter that is closed qualification and now mm -hmm. it's gotta 
we got to ramp it up a little bit, a little bit more to uh, to compete against uh, the team of the the draw. Yeah. Final question before we let you go. I think for the casual fan, if they pick like a secondary team to root for, Canada was so easy to root for. Uh, a lot of MLS guys, but also just a really likable squad, a good squad. What is the secret sauce that's made this year's Team Canada so good? Uh, the brotherhood, the brotherhood that we have within the team. Uh, obviously, there's some quality, there's some depth, some youth, and some nice veterans mm -hmm. to our teams. But uh, the brotherhood and the togetherness that we have is something that uh, is a match. Yeah. I love that. Max, this has been such a fun conversation. It's so funny. Uh, Steph Fry <laughs> once told us he was like, goalkeepers are just wired a little, a little differently, and they can be. Oh, I'm so like, happy you're asking that. No, you know, like it's like they. He was like, we're just, we're just different. But you seem to be just completely like calm. But Do you have a weird? I have that is side. There some crazy, but there's another is there side. Some crazy yeah. in there, Max. There is some. There uh -huh. is some a little uh -huh. bit, you know, uh, when we have a conversation, yeah, I feel like a human, <laughs> human, normal person. Yeah. Uh, but when I step on the on the field, there's a little gap that it closes. It's just game mode, you know? Yeah, we're a weird hobby, I have to ask, because we I feel like every goalkeeper we meet has like this hobby, like... Oh yeah, they're an artist. Artist. Or something. Jeff yeah. Attenella is a children's book writer, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fun fact. Interesting. Do you um, have any... Uh, not so much. Are you a musician? Fair. Do you sing? No, I'm a horrible singer. <laughs> Horrible singer. I mean, I walk the dog often. Like that's that's a nice hobby. Nurturing. But like Brad Guzan doesn't have one that I know nurturing. of. Nurturing. So it's not all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are so excited because we have a repeat customer on the call <laughs> up happen today. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a guy um, who has made 50 caps for the U.S. Men's National Team. He is currently a midfielder for LAFC, Kellen Acosta. Woo -woo! It's great to have you back on the podcast. It's great to be back. Thanks for having me. Thanks for you hanging with us. You know who our repeat us. customers are now that I've realized? Greg Manning, uh -huh. Dax McCarty, uh -huh. and Kellen Acosta. And Kellen yeah, Acosta. What a great crew. company. Good what company. Crew. Look at that. No, we had so much fun the first time we had yeah, to have you great. back. Obviously, yeah. we're we're in LA ahead of um, a very big weekend. This is going to be your first experience playing in El Trafico, Kellen. What are the uh, what are the emotions heading into this game? No, nah, I mean for the LA Derby, like I'm I'm excited for it. LA Derby. Are you not calling it, it El Trafico? Did we catch it? Yeah, I don't call it El Trafico. This is Trafico. amazing. No one likes it, but LA why? Derby. Yeah, why? Just, I don't know, it sounds forced. Got it. LA Derby sounds so much na more natural. I this is okay, this is no, this we is are good changing to know because it's like a, a general consensus yeah. this week on the call LA players. Derby. And it's been you heard it here first. And it's been <laughs> it's been um LAFC players as well as Galaxy players are like, no, we're not no. Your head not coach El Trafico. Steve Trundolo, I think, said LA Derby is Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Kellen Acosta. So, yeah, there we LA go. Derby. LA, LA Derby. Derby. Let's LA talk Derby. About it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm excited for it. I mean, it's one of those things where I was always on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. just watching on TV, you know, seeing the, the rivalry, you know, from a screen is a lot different than playing it. So, Saturday is going to be it's going to be exciting. Do you feel it? Like do you kind of like feel the the energy is it different than, you know, heading into uh, any other game weekend? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's just one of those things that has a countdown, right? Mm -hmm. You're like five days to the game, four days to the game, three. I mean, everyone's kind of just excited for it. All the, um, you know, the, the fan bases are, you know, going at it. I see all this stuff on social media, um, you know, doing more interviews than most <laughs> during the week of it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, when you want to play your rival, you want to, you know, you know, have your – best performers to get the best possible results so we're, we're looking to you know do that on the weekend and get our first win in Carson so that would be that would be huge for Boom. for all of us in our organization and fan base. Kellen you said you arrived here to Los Angeles from Colorado during the week of the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like what what a what a welcome. <laughs> hey, it was it was up? it was crazy yeah. it was crazy I was like parties every day I see random people walking the streets <laughs> um I mean you name it I, I mean I saw it any it celebrities was, yeah I was gonna that you know, I, like I a saw a few, for? a few yeah it's all like I saw Kalani she was just eating dinner with her daughter just chill, chill. I saw Amber Rose <laughs> I've seen Haley Bieber. Amazing. Oh I've my seen, God. I've seen. Uh, These are like A list. Just like, just random people. Well, yeah. A list and A list. I know. Exactly. A list and A list. A list no, and A list. I wouldn't put myself in that category, but yeah, there was quite a few just roaming the streets like just nothing. <laughs> just nothing. How have you adjusted to to life in yeah. Los Angeles? No, it's been it's been great. It's been great. I mean, the weather, as you can see, has been beautiful. Can't complain. Yeah. 
Uh, the team has been great. It's obviously great winning. We got a, it's winning ways now, undefeated. So that's obviously positive and makes the transition a lot easier. My teammates have been super welcoming. Same with the, the staff and front office. So it, life's been good thus far. Kellen, we can't have you, U.S. Men's National Team midfielder, on our show and not talk about just the <sighs> week it has been. Uh, you played in 13 of the 14 <laughs> World Cup qualifiers. Finally, World Cup qualifying is over. Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> the Let's U.S. Men's go. National Team qualifies for Qatar. <sighs> <sighs> what is the feeling now? Relieved. Did you say, well, Relieved yeah. is the word. Like, you guys let out the Well, you exhales. were in Kuva. Mm. I like, was. So I was. You, you've was. been carrying that burden, Kellen, for for five years now. So, like, I mean, obviously as fans, like, it was a huge exhale. So it I was, can only yeah. imagine what that was like. Yeah, I mean, it was just one of those things where we set aside our objective was to qualify. We knew it was going to be a long road ahead. Long, what, seven months? Mm -hmm. And to finally <laughs> achieve our goal was definitely, it was it was just great to, to have that experience and to get over that hump, like you said, in, in Cuba was, it was very disappointing for all of us, but to, to achieve our goals, give back to our fan base, to, to you know, give back to just America. We're back yes. in the World Cup, so we're all, we're all excited for it, we all feel it. So, so when we spoke yeah. to you in October, the word was resilient. Now it's relief, which I love. And Sue's mentions four years ago, is that kind of like dark cloud burden? Is that totally wiped now? Is that gone? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is part of our history, right? I mean, you, you want to, you know, put that behind you, but it's a moment that kind of shaped us to where we are today. So it's part of it. Um, I think it, it, it was one of those things where we had to embrace, accept it for what it is and move forward. And that's what we did with this qualifying group. And we, we got the job done and and our objective was to qualify and we did this that and now it's another six months to to you know put our best foot forward and be ready for what's to come in and November. beat England and, yeah, beat and Iran and England. and everyone keeps stressing and England I know I and I know Ukraine slash Scotland well, yeah, slash so I say game. I bring up England because the media over there has been right I mean, there's a lot of history they're a lot so of thirsty. history there's fair enough I'm like British media yeah, I know types. we're I know. not looking at all that we're looking about just playing Heck yeah, this no. is what this yeah. is this is what <laughs> makes me feel confident I love it well we're so happy and so proud of you guys um it's going to be a very tense seven months for everybody but and we're very late. excited <laughs> um we cannot have you on the pod without asking um some style questions because <laughs> I, I know we i know we drove it home the first time we had you on but you were you were living in colorado at the time and so you know that's a whole different wardrobe mm. right yeah you know, that's yeah. a lot of like heavy knits yeah they're coats. they're in trunks right now so I, so what is how has the style evolved since moving well, to Los I had Angeles? a transition to warmer weather okay. um it's one of those things just moving here I'm like I kind of miss the cold in a way yeah. being in the warmth is just like man like it's just being in down in the sun warm I can't wear like you said the knits the jackets the you know the layers mm -hmm. so I kind of had to adapt a little bit but it's it's been it's been good so far mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. what are we still rocking evolving. what are we rocking now like in like a day like this it is hot here by the way a day like this it yeah. just kind of depends I mean obviously a night game is a little bit cooler yeah. so you know I'm, I'm in and out so I mean I can still wear like a light jacket okay Trousers, jeans, you name it. Nice sneaker. Maybe some linen per se. Some linen. Linen. That's yeah. more more of a summer. Oh. We're not quite there yet, but I, I mean, I'm can, not can. as knowledgeable as <laughs> I know. And I'm trying You're here. <laughs> Kellen, I don't mind it. It's it's evolving, We're novices. right? Growing. I'm trying to be perfect. <laughs> you know? We're novices. Well, Kellen, this is so fun. We we love our check-ins with you. Thank you for coming back. Yeah, thanks and, for uh, having we me. We can't wait to see you in uh, your first L uh, L LA Derby. I can't sell traffic. Uh, yep. LA. LA Derby. Derby. But I like El Trafico better. For the record, we are completely <laughs> neutral. <laughs> We've just been given gifts. Well, this is the thing. If you give us gifts, if you give us customized jerseys, we will support you on the side of the rivalry and the LA Galaxy. We're so kind. I'm not supporting give us anyone. I'm just holding these my LA customized Galaxy jerseys. jerseys that are so incredible. Very and sweet. you will notice that there is the number 22 on them, which you might think is because it's 2022, mm. but it's actually, Jill, both of our favorite numbers. It's I mean, I know. If you thought we couldn't get more nauseating, here it is. But it's true. It's my my birthday is on the 22nd. My mom's birthday is the 22nd. And um, it was very significant when I was five. Um, it was my cup number in, in kindergarten. <laughs> when that. you had to go up to the sink, you had an assigned cup. And I was, you know, low on the alphabetical order. And yeah, number 22. 
Number 22 is my good old And look at number. us now. Uh, no, but huge thanks to Vicky Mercado, Kevin Acevedo, and Casey, Casey Kobakoff for uh, giving us these. These are so, so cool. Um, and big thanks to LAFC for being the other <sighs> end of uh, what's been an incredible week. I Getting mean, ready for the biggest game of the year. El Trafico, you guys, the first installment 2022 happening this weekend. Right you can check it out on Fox and Fox Deportes, 7.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff. These games, I said it in the beginning, these games never disappoint, you guys. I'm getting so, emotional just remembering that little tear coming to my eye, remembering Zlatan coming on this field I right here. I was here. I was, I was the right seven. there. It was amazing. So who knows what we're going to see this weekend. Um, but sadly, we have to, they're going to make us leave LA. Yeah, no. Sure. We'll see you. We're going to be here next week. We'll Probably. see you from LA. I'm not going to leave yet. Absolutely not. You thought that episode was good? Stay tuned for next week. And P.S. We're sipping on, this is guava juice. It's delicious. It's fresh squeezed. We like to think by Carlos Vela. It, it I was sent by him. It was to sent us. by Carlos Vela to us, and um, it tastes delicious. And it's now really, my heart's really torn. I know, I know, I know. This this rivalry, man. What's a girl to do? Guava juice jersey, <laughs> guava juice jersey. Who knows? Stay tuned. Next week, you got double trouble. Uh, we talked to both coaches of this incredible LA market. Greg Vanny, Steve Turundolo. Just keep an eye out for that. El Trafico. This is very exciting because this is the first time in this rivalry we're going to see Carlos Vela and Chicharito yeah. square off together. Um, from the coach's perspective, what do you think this match is going to look like? Because it's always crazy. I feel like El yeah. Trafico always delivers. I think it's going to have a high intensity level. I think both teams are confident. Uh, I think there is a lot of quality on the field for both teams. Um, I think there's an energy right now that exists between our two groups because we're both in positive direction. Uh, that's going to bring a, a lot of intensity, a lot of intensity to the game. So it, it'll be curious because I think there'll be a, com a competition really over the balance of power in the game. Do we? Is it going to be in their version or in our version? And I think it should be pretty exciting because I think it will have its ebbs and flows for sure. That's spicy. I know. I I'm like here it. For that, your first cell trap. Oh. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel good. It's uh, we don't have a long travel to for an away game. So it's, <laughs> it's nice. There's some advantages of playing a team here in LA. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the name El Trafico? Um, for me, it's a for me, it's a derby. Um, what what kind of very time. European? Like a Trafico derby? Like what would you name it if you had to come up with something else? I would just say it's a it's a it's a Southern California rivalry. SoCal. No, so we're gathering here. No one's too hot on the name. I know. I know. I'm LAFC. getting. I'm getting that impression. Um, no, that's. It's. It's one of those rivalries, though. I feel like I've been very lucky that I've been able to be at a lot of these matches in person, and like something bananas happens every single match. It's just one of those games that sort of lends itself to crazy. Um, could that be the expectation for this weekend? It is, and that's yeah. something we'll discuss this week. Um, it's that game that everything does happen that probably shouldn't happen, but <laughs> does somehow. So we'll be ready, and I know they'll be ready, and it's fantastic for our league, for our fans. It's I'm really excited to be a part of it, and for me, the glass is always half full. Yeah. So um, it's just, it's for me, it's very positive to see our game in the United States has progressed so far. We have an inner state rivalries we'll say uh -huh. can't really say inner city what's up everybody it is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz co-hosts of the call up and if you want more call up action hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube right there and also make sure that you download every episode of the call up every single Tuesday at five o'clock eastern time or anywhere that you get your podcasts and while you're here why not check out some of these other videos as well